I have often puzzled and puzzled about what it must be like to go to sleep and never wake up. To be simply not there forever and ever. Twenty twenty two is here, and we are off to a great start. The VHS two is finally stateside, and I'm not talking about the video players we all had when we were kids. This is one gun that I never imagined of having the pleasure of shooting. Let me tell you, dreams do come true, and now you can have one too, thanks to Springfield Armory. Imported from Croatia, the Hellion is a civilian legal semi-auto version of the famous VHS two rifle, a bullpup style rifle chambered in 556 that accepts PMAGs. That's right, you heard it, it accepts PMAGs. Development began as a request from the Croatian Army for a new infantry rifle and was introduced at the IKA exhibition in 2007. A new and improved version of the VHS rifle, known as the VHS-2, was introduced in April 2013. The bullpup is a different breed of rifle. The action is located behind the trigger instead of in front like a traditional rifle. It takes a little bit to get used to these, especially when it comes to reloading a fresh magazine. When Springfield first told me they were importing the rifle, I pictured a massive price tag. The price definitely wasn't as high as I imagined. The Springfield Hellion comes with an MSRP of $2,000, which was a pretty easy pill to swallow compared to some imported firearms on the market. Built on a short stroke piston system, it makes for a pleasant shooting experience. When shooting a piston driven firearm, you will notice the recoil impulse is less than your standard direct impingement rifles. You will also notice that it runs a little bit cleaner. During the course of my t &E, I ran it suppressed 100% of the time. I just couldn't help myself. When you get your hands on a rifle like this and own a suppressor, let's just say they go hand in hand. I was running a Q Thunder Chicken with their Cherry Bomb muzzle device and I couldn't believe how quiet the setup was. We all know 556 is a very hard round to suppress. With this being a major plus for the rifle, I did notice that it was a little on the gassy side, but thanks to the design of the bullpup, I wasn't getting a direct hit of gas to the face like you will with an AR-15. With over 400 rounds suppressed in under two hours, function, reliability, it was never an issue. This thing ran flawless. The Hellion has a 16 inch barrel and ships with a four prong flash hider. I didn't get to test out the flash hider just because I was too excited to throw my suppressor on. The barrel is hammer forged from 4150 steel and given a melanite finish. This barrel is impressive, extremely accurate and durable. Even though the Hellion sports a 16 inch barrel, the overall length of the firearm comes in at just over 28 inches. That's the beauty of a bullpup. You get the ballistics of a full size rifle with a shorter overall length. A unique feature to the Hellion is this non-reciprocating ambidextrous charging handle. Far from your traditional charging handle, it moves to both the left and the right side of the firearm. Whether you are a right or a left-handed shooter, you shouldn't have an issue when it comes to charging your weapon. The action is smooth, and I mean gliding on ice smooth. There's no grittiness or hesitation when you charge this bad boy. The trigger on the Hellion is what you would expect from a battle rifle. There's really nothing too special about it. It has a bit of a take up, but a fairly clean break. My only gripe is going to be the reset. It has a pretty long reset. It took me a couple megs worth of shooting to get used to it. After getting the feel for it, I was able to cook off some rounds fairly quick. With that being said, you know, it's a decent trigger. It's repetitive in the fact that it breaks and resets in the same spot every time, which makes it easy to get accustomed to. Let's talk about mounting capabilities. In today's day and age, people are trying to mount anything and everything to their rifles. The Hellion gives you that option with its polymer M-Lock handguard. I found it to be pretty comfortable in the hand, and it also gave me the ability to mount this Magpul vertical grip. I run vertical grips on the majority of my rifles. It makes it just a little bit easier to pull that rifle into my shoulder. 
while shooting suppressed, the handguard did start to heat up a little bit, but nothing too crazy. The front of the handguard also has a QD point for a sling attachment. When it comes to mounting optics, you have a full length pick rail on top. I guess you could even use it as a carry handle if you had to. Sitting on top is a Night Force NX8 LPVO. This thing is incredible. Daylight bright illuminated reticle, 1 to 8 magnification, crystal clear glass, and the quality we have all known Night Force to deliver. It is a little pricey at $1,800, but as always, you get what you pay for. I think the NX8 is a perfect match for the Hellion. I might have to do a future video on this optic. Integrated into the rail are flip-up iron sights. I think that's a great feature. The sights deploy with the push of a button, and they stay locked. An updated feature to the VHS-2 over the original VHS is the ejection port. You have the ability to change the side of cartridge ejection. This can be done easily and usually in under a minute. You left-handed shooters, you guys are on a roll when it comes to the ambi features. Let's keep it going with the ambi safety selector. If I had to pick out a negative for the Hellion, this would be it. I am not a fan of the safety selector. It does what it needs to do, but the placement of it is a little bit of a stretch for my thumb to reach. I have to readjust my grip just to engage it. Not a deal breaker, but I did want to point that out. Speaking of grips, the Hellion ships with one of my favorites, the BCM Gunfighter Mod 3. The texture on this grip is very aggressive and the angle is perfect for me. I run these on a few of my other rifles for a reason. Sitting at the very end of this rifle is a 5 position adjustable stock with the QD point. I am very glad this isn't a fixed stock. Versatility is everything in my opinion. I'm a fan of the stock, very comfortable and a good angle for mounting to your shoulder. With this being a bullpup, the magazine well is located behind the trigger. I struggled a bit when reloading a fresh mag, but you warm up to it fairly quick. The magazine release is located directly behind the mag well. It's great for the grip and rip method of extracting a magazine. The bolt release is a little goofy. I'm so used to traditional ARs, slap the ping pong paddle, and you're good to go. There's a bit of extra arm movement on the end user's part to close the bolt on this. Just like riding a bike, once you have it down, you're good to go. Releasing the bolt is done by pressing this tab on the back of the Hellion. Bonus to this rifle is that it does have a last round hole open. Let's talk weight. The Springfield Hellion is a pig. Coming in at 8 pounds unloaded, it is a fairly heavy rifle. While being on the heavy side, the weight distribution is spot on. It doesn't favor being front or rear heavy, but more centered right in the middle, making it an easy weapon to maneuver. With that being said, I wouldn't want to carry this for a long period of time, especially over rugged terrain. My final thoughts. The Hellion is one of the coolest rifles that I have had the pleasure of shooting. And when I say that, I mean by far. I like the bolt pup design for the simple fact of having full-size rifle ballistics in a shorter package. The recoil impulse is almost non-existent thanks to the short stroke piston system, especially while shooting suppressed. It is such a soft shooter. Being able to adjust the gas block for normal or suppressed shooting, I consider that a major win. Ergonomics of the rifle are great, except for the safety selector, which I can live with. You find ways around little things like that. Adapt and overcome. Springfield Armory, thank you for importing one of the coolest rifles ever produced. Hopefully HK will take notes and start importing a civilian MP7. I know, good luck. Guys, as always, thank you for stopping in. Stay vigilant, and I will see you next time.